Hey guys, Nick here and welcome back to a, another DaVinci Resolve tutorial. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing down below. So today we are taking a look at color grading and like my previous DaVinci Resolve tutorial, we're gonna keep this nice and short and sweet. We're gonna only show you what you need to know rather than all the features because this is a feature pack software. So we're gonna keep it as nice and precise as possible. So just quickly in this video, we will be going through the basic layout of the color tab, all the options that are in there, but just a very basic overview. We're gonna go through the different color tools you have available, what they do, but also I'm gonna highlight the ones that really you should focus on, uh, especially for YouTube videos and simple videos. Quick overview of the node section, and again, we're only going through the tools that you need to use, and uh, if you wanna further experiment with them, you can. Then we're gonna apply a grade to a piece of footage. We're gonna chuck a LUT on that piece of footage. Whilst there, we'll show you how to load your your LUTs into DaVinci Resolve so you can access them nice and quickly. Then we're just going to go through how to apply that grade to multiple clips, combining the clips together so that you don't actually have to do that. So without further ado, we're gonna jump into Resolve. We're gonna create a new project, call this uh, color grading tutorial. And just gonna import footage. Going to just drag this bit of footage on to the timeline, gonna delete the audio we have this bit of footage here nothing special just tree bit of color with the flowers and then it goes over here and we've got a little bit more interesting stuff here now this was shot on my sony a7 III in the cine 4 profile so it's not super flat like s log but it does require a little bit of adjustment so to do that once you've got your clip in the timeline you come over to the color tab down the bottom and davinci resolve dean and when it opens it will probably look something like this. So we'll go from left to right, top to bottom, like a book. So at the top here, we have our different tabs. Um, the gallery tab is from taking stills out. That's obviously no stills created. Uh, we don't need to look at that. The LUT tab is pretty self-explanatory. This is where all your LUTs are going to be. And again, we'll go into that a little bit. Media pool, as with every other tab in DaVinci Resolve, you have access to your media clips and then you have your timeline. So if you wanna be able to scrub through your timeline, you can turn that on and off. Um, coming over to the right-hand side, we have more options. So the clips tab turns your clips on and off. You will want this on. It just makes it easier to see what clips you're working on. The nodes one, again, these are just opening and closing different sections of the interface. This is the best layout I've found to use. And so I have my nodes open here. Open effects is gonna bring some effects open that you can use. And again, this is similar to the edit tab or the Fairlight tab. They all have this effects section. We're not gonna look into this today. You can dabble in your own time. And then Lightbox is kind of like a an overview of all your color grades that you've done. Um, don't need to go into that at all. Then we obviously have our viewer over here and the node section, like I said, and we can you know zoom in and out. Our clips, which will, if we have more. So if I cut this footage up quickly, you know, we just do that and we go over to the color tab. You can see that it's now added each individual clip. You might think that that's a bit of a pain to begin with, but that is purely because in the professional world, you will color grade very particularly. And so you would not normally want to take this whole piece of footage and apply the same grade to it. You'd probably do gradual grades throughout the whole piece, obviously, especially here where the uh, lighting changes, that's definitely something that you'd want to do. Um, for YouTube videos, that can be a bit of a pain and we'll show you how to group those clips together a little bit later. <sighs> there is a lot in the color tab. DaVinci Resolve started as a coloring software, so that's why there is so much here. All these icons here are to do with coloring and different options you have and you go through them and they have lots of different options and some of them, even like the curves tab here, have tabs within tabs where you have multiple windows here that all do different things. But for basic color grade, you only need to know of a few of them. So you want the color wheels tab and we're only gonna look at the primary wheels. Then we're gonna look at the curves tab. And again, we'll only look at the basic curve. We're gonna have a quick look at the power window tab and this is just masks. They call them power windows. 
but it's a mask. We're, and then we're also going to have a look at the keying tab. And this is primarily using color grading as sort of your alpha or your opacity. So as, I, as you can see, white would be 100 and you can drag your opacity right down like so. With every setting in the color tab, you will have either a reset button at the top or you can double click on values like so. If I drag that up, double clicking on a value will reset it. We also have more options down. There's options and options and options, but we'll go through what you really need just for a basic grade to get started. To the right of all the color options, you have your waveforms, which can be your RGB parade. You can have your vector scope histogram, I like the waveform, it's just easier for me to use. Yeah, that's pretty much a general gist of the color grading tab is very, very general and it requires a lot more time to go through in depth, but this tutorial is focused on the basics. So quick note as well, once you've applied a color grade, you'll notice a nice colorful box will appear around the shot number. That is to let you know you have applied a color grade. It's a nice organizational tool. With the nodes, if you go up to the color tab up the top here, you can hover over nodes and you can see that we have a lot of different nodes. We've got parallel nodes, layer nodes, you can outside node. You know, split a combiner node. It can be very overwhelming for those getting into DaVinci Resolve. So I'll simplify it. You only need to know what a serial node is. What a serial node is, is basically if I add one here and I'm using the shortcut option S, or you can go color nodes, add serial node. All it is, it's a simple node that has an input and an output and that's it. There's no real special functions. It's just sort of like your basic node and that is all you're going to want to use when doing a basic color grade. Now, with color grading, you always want to stick to one particular part of a grade to a single node. You don't want to chuck the entire grade onto this one node here because then if you want to go back, it becomes a bit of a pain. So let's start grading and I'll show you what I mean. The first thing you normally do to color grade is just a base grade. So this is going to be balancing the highlights of the shot, the shadows, the midtones, and then pumping a bit more saturation into this shot because obviously this was shot in a, you know, a desaturated profile. So to do that, we use our color wheels. So we've got lift, gamma and gain, or we have shadows, midtones, highlights, and the wheel in the middle controls the tint of the shadow, midtones and highlights. And this little slider here, if I click and drag, is the intensity. And you can see these numbers changing. I will use the scopes because the scopes are more trustworthy than my monitor. And basically we're gonna bring the peaks here just under the top and we're going to bring the shadows down just over the zero. I'm not a colorist by any means, but we're just going to do that quickly here. So I'm going to bring that there, go to the shadows, bring the shadows right, right down. I'm going to balance the mid-tones out a little bit by doing that. And because this was shot in a log-ish format, I'm going to also boost the saturation just a little bit. I generally find 54 is generally a good point. And this is the saturation here. And if we go to a second page here, this is where we're going to have our temperature tint. The only runs you're really going to want to use will be your saturation and your temperature. So looking at this shot here, I'd say it's a little bit cool. So I might warm it up ever so slightly, but that's all I'd would do in this one node base grade. So all we've done is we've adjust the shadow highlights, midtones, a little bit of saturation and a slight temperature adjustment. So that's gonna be my base grade. I'm gonna label this. To label a node, you can right click node label and I'm just gonna call it base. This is all for organization's sake. Um, keeping organized is important. From there, I'm gonna add another node. Multiple ways you can do that. Like I showed you before, you can go to the color tab at the top. You can hit option S on a Mac or you can right click add node, add serial. So for the second part of the grade, I generally will chuck in an S curve and that's gonna add a little bit more contrast to the shot, um, more contrast than uh, doing the base adjustment as is. So I'm gonna do my normal S curve by going into the curves tab here. And then I always bring the shadows off of bottom because shadows are never completely black. And then again, I'm gonna right click node label and I'm going to call that the contrast because that's what I did in that node. If at any point during your color grade you want to disable a node that you have just done so you can see sort of the changes you have made you can do command D or on a um, computer or a PC it'd be control D and that disables that node. So here you can see the differences that we have made and it's just really bringing out the shadows and it's just adding that extra little bit of a punch and again we could go to the base grade and you can see how much more 
saturation is in the shot. And generally that is what I would leave that one shot to be. You got nice saturation, we fixed the temperature and there's good contrast in the shot as well. A lot of us out there like to use LUTs or a lookup table to add a little bit of extra pizzazz to the shot. So again, as with everything in the color tab, we're gonna add a, another serial node, option S for those keeping tabs. I'm gonna rename this as is, I'm gonna call it a LUT. To apply a LUT, we can do a few different things. We could right click, go to LUT. And as you can see, if I go to 3D LUT, we have all our LUTs in here. And these are the ones loaded into DaVinci Resolve. What I like to do, however, is with that node selected, I'm gonna open up my LUTs window, which we went through right at the start. And that's gonna bring the exact same folder up. Best part about this is I can go to my Peter McKinnon LUTs and hover over it. And it's actually gonna show me what that LUT is going to look like on that footage, 100%, but what it will look like. and gives me a really quick idea of which one I might apply. And Kodak Killer is my favorite. So I'm just gonna double click on this. And what you'll notice is all of a sudden you'll get this like grid-like icon on that node that is applied it to that node. We can shut LUTs down now. But a lot of you might notice that that is, that is like too much cologne when you're at the club. It's coming on too strong. So we need to dial it back. To do that, we go to that other tab I showed you that we're gonna look at, which is the keying tab. And if you remember what I said at the beginning, that is like the opacity or the alpha of that layer. So if I drop that to say 0.5, you'll notice that the intensity has gone way, way down. And if we scrub through and turn it on and off with our Command D, yeah, I, I like that. It's adding a nice little bit of a color to it. So very quickly, as you can see here, we've done our base correction then we've added a bit of contrast and then chucked a nice LUT on top of it. Generally, this is the sort of order we will go, especially with creating videos for YouTube, but we can take it a step further. Maybe you wanna add a bit of vignette, seems to be the thing at the moment to make it a little bit more punchy. So we're gonna do that now as well. And it's very, very simple. We add another node, we're gonna label it because we're organized like that. I'm gonna call it vignette. So we wanna create a mask and I showed you that window here. It's this one here and we can just click on, we want a circle mask, click on it just once and it's gonna bring up circle mask and it doesn't take an expert to show you that we have our handles. So these red handles control the sort of the fall off or the softness of that mask. And then these other handles will control the width. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna drag it out so that we have a nice coverage like so. and the problem is at the moment, if I go and do anything, it's going to adjust pretty much the whole image because it's adjusting the center of that power window. We need to invert it to create the vignette. To invert a mask, it's very simple. You've got the button here, bang, do that. And now we've got kind of like a reverse vignette going on. So we go back to our color wheels and all we wanna do for a vignette is drop the highlights and that's gonna darken the edges ever so slightly. And then we can play with the softness. And as you can see now, if I turn this on and off, we have a very slight vignette on the image. It's very, very subtle, but it is there. And a lot of you might wanna use that if you're doing like a talking headshot. It'll, I do it a lot for my videos. It just makes you pop on screen. And there you go. That is the entire color grade for that shot. We didn't have to do much at all. If you're coming from another piece of software like Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro, you're probably used to doing color grades on adjustment layers. That way you're not affecting the actual footage. And that's where nodes are fantastic because you're not really affecting the actual footage. And at any time, if you double click on these connections here, it will disable the node and you've got your normal clip here, non-color graded. And that's because your footage, which is this little doohickey here, is not connected to the node tree at all. And if I wanted to go through and create a completely different color grade, I could, and it'd be as simple as that. But for now, we're just gonna connect them and leave it like so. So we've done our color grade, but we've gone through and because we've added out our footage and we've cut, cut it up, we've got a we've got these extra shots here and they're pretty much the same. We wanna apply the exact same color grade. It's kind of confusing the way you do it, but what all you do is you select the clips that you want to apply the same grade to. Let's just for argument's sake, say we wanna apply it to all three. So I'm gonna control click, select them all. With all the clips selected, you're gonna right click on your graded clip, apply grade. And all that is gonna do is it's gonna apply the grade from your unselected clip to the selected clips. It is a little bit confusing 
and backwards the way it works, but we do that. And as you can see now, all the clips here are color graded with the exact same grade and you can see the exact same node tree as well just as easy as that it is a little bit of a pain though imagine if you have a talking head shot and you're consistently cutting it up because you have a lot of mess ups or a lot of ums and you want to you know you want to make it look clean so you're going to end up having a piece of footage like this with a lot of cuts in it what i like to do in davinci resolve is once i've finished the edit is select that main bit of footage right click and make a compound clip we just call it the main edit or whatever you want to call it. What that does is now we, instead of having one clip cut into eight pieces or whatever, we have one clip with no cuts. And if I go back to the color tab now, we can see that instead of four clips here, we have the compound clip. Now, because I've done this after the color grade, it's kind of doesn't think that there's any grade applied. It's because I've applied it to the individual clips. And that's great because what I can do now is I can go through here and make a further adjustment if I wanted to do so, but it doesn't really matter what order you do it in. I tend to compound clip for a color grade and then color grade later. So you've color graded your clip, you're done and dusted, it's all said and done, you've got nothing left to do, but maybe add a couple of graphics or whatever, you're doing a little bit more editing and you've noticed that it's slowing down a bit. And that's because, you know, applying color effects is quite taxing on a computer. Well, luckily DaVinci Resolve has a great little icon in every section of the editor, whether that's in the color tab or in the fusion tab or the Fairlight tab. And it's this little weird icon here. And if I click that, all that's gonna do is disable the color grade whilst you're editing. It allows you to nice and quickly breeze through. And then if you were to come back to the end here, it's already going to render it out with the color grade applied. It's purely and simply just for editing sake. And that's a really great way. You don't have to go and disable effects or anything like that. It's just a quick button, bam, done. You can go ahead editing. So in this video, we've covered the really basic layout of how the color tab is and gone through how to color grade a clip, the main tools that you're gonna use, which is the color wheels, the curves, power windows or your masks and the Kia, which is like I said, the alpha channel. We also went through what nodes to use. Just to reiterate, we only wanna use serial nodes. These other nodes obviously have a purpose, but for basic color grading, don't look into them, don't overcomplicate it. Serial nodes are the way to go. And we you know, went over a quick color grade and how to make it zippy in the timeline. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful to those of you following along. If you enjoyed it, drop a comment down below or hit that thumbs up button. And you know, if you want me to do more DaVinci Resolve tutorials, let me know in the comment section. Until the next one guys, see ya.